Congratulations. It's been a pleasure for me to collaborate with you and your team uh, on this project to reconsider um, Bruce Lee, you know, especially with the community um, of San Francisco and San Francisco Chinatown, which, uh, as many of you know, is the birthplace of Bruce Lee. It's really hard for me to speak <laughs> because I can't see you guys, so bear with me. Um, so I want to welcome you and say good afternoon and thank you for coming out here on a rainy Saturday afternoon to be with us in this uh, historic theater. I'm from Los Angeles and like just a little sprinkle and nobody comes out of the house. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, so yes, this is a historic theater, especially in connection with Bruce Lee. In the 1930s and 40s, Bruce Lee's father who was a Cantonese opera star, performed mainly at the Mandarin Theater, which is called the Sun Sing now. Um, and that was the cross Chinatown rival to this theater, which was known as Great China Theater at that time. So Great China, aka Great Star, um, however, did host uh, Lee's father for a time. Um, and the theater also premiered Golden Gate Girl, the 1941 film directed by the San Francisco Chinatown born and pioneering Chinese American filmmaker, uh, Esther Eng. And um, the film, Golden Gate Girl, stars uh, Baby Bruce in his first ever appearance on film. And that film premiered at this theater. And then Enter the Dragon had its first screening in the United States, also in this theater. So it's appropriate, uh, we think, that um, in our Radiating Bruce Lee series, uh, after two previous weekends where we've explored the cultural resonances emanating from Bruce Lee, we come back to look at uh, Bruce Lee himself in this theater with historic connections to his life and work. So we will start with a talk by Sam Ho and how Bruce Lee became Bruce Lee the formation of these syncretic identities in the crucible of colonial um, post-war Hong Kong, and how Bruce Lee bridged cultural tradition and modernity, how he defined Chineseness, not as a static thing fixed in place and time, but Chineseness in diaspora and in motion. So Sam has come all the way from Hong Kong to be with us today. Sam is a curator, a researcher, writer, film critic based in Hong Kong and the US. He specializes in the study of Hong Kong cinema, but has written widely and curated dozens of programs on various aspects of international cinema. He has given many lectures and speeches all over the world to promote Hong Kong cinema. And he will speak for about 45 minutes that will be followed by 30 minutes of uh, Q&A. Um, and then we'll take a 10 minute break, come back for part two of today's program at 4 p.m. And that is a very, very special screening of the Orphan. So I just want to tell you that you are a very, very privileged crowd to get to see the Orphan. It is a very hard film to see outside the Hong Kong Film Archive. We are deeply grateful to Mr. Tom Eng for granting us permission to screen the film. We are grateful as well to Sam and the Hong Kong Film Archive for their help in making the screening possible. So, to show the film though, we need your cooperation. So, you've seen the signs posted at the entrances. Absolutely no cell phone use or recording will be allowed during the screening of The Orphan. And we will remove you from the theater if you even take out your mobile device once the screening starts, okay? We're being serious here. Um, and we won't give you any warning, um, so please make sure you turn off your devices, put them away uh, when the screening starts after Sam's talk. But during Sam's talk, you're welcome to record him. <laughs> so, um, we appreciate your cooperation on this. So it's the only way you know we are able to show you this film. I think the restrictions are worth um, are worth taking. And uh, so let's start the program and let's give a warm welcome to Sam Hope. <laughs> 